what's up, Chanel? Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlogs versus series. And today, from good old Sweden, we're gonna have dissections, the Sombrolin pop up edition. Spooky versus dissection. Storm of the Lights Bane, which is a bootleg from Crito Records. Uh, it was a gift, but... Now, this version of the Sombra Lens, they did not try and shove every track onto a single LP, double LP, black vinyl, so good! But this is also available on cassette, which I would love to have again. I used to have it on cassette, but the pop-up gimmick has nothing to do with the sound quality, though. This record, wow. Now, I do not know if Black Lodge did a modern reissue yet of Storm, but the lyric sheet has this amazing castle, and it's just rest in power, John. Such a like when it comes to that classic Scandinavian melodic black metal sound, come on, dissection just had it down. But then after the somber end came an amazing EP, but. Real quickly, let's check out the bootleg. Pretty sure 180 gram vinyl, if I remember correctly. There's no hype sticker or anything, which I kind you kind of would assume there would be for this release. But this is not like the first attempt at this release that uh, Black Lodge did. The first edition was legit boof. Like, the only thing that was cool about it was it was the Sombrolin on vinyl. But it wasn't really cool spending an extra $25 for this. Come on. Like, I'd rather have the cassette tape, but hey, at least the songs sound good, and that's because they were separated on a double LP. And I think Swano did the, uh, like the remaster, yeah, remaster by Dan Swano, so there you go, right there. And yeah, double LP. 33 RPMs, and like side A has Black Horizon and the Sombrolin, side B, Crimson Towers, A Lamp Forlorn, he Heaven Damnation, C, Frozen, into, into Infinite Obscurity, into the Cold Winds of Nowhere, then the Grief Prophecy, 
Shadows over a lost kingdom, mistress of the bleeding sorrow, and feathers fell. Why did they try and fit this monster onto a single LP? I don't know. But also, I am not five years old. I do not need a pop-up book. But the sound quality is legit, like... It's worth, like, it's legit, like, worth it. Like, as boof as that gimmick is, it's worth it for the sound quality. Otherwise, get the cassette tape. Like, for real. That's, like, the CD, the cassette tape, or just deal with the gimmick price. Because, legit, the sound quality is, like, top tier. Like, this is the best I've ever heard. The Somberland sound. And I owned the CD version. I owned the first press. I owned the remake. I, I'm a big dissection nerd. And I hated all the post-jail shit, by the way. Except for the live recordings where I used to skip the stuff from the EP and the Mala... Wait, was the EP the Mala Kali... EP and the full length was. I'm talking post jail. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. But I know for a fact the one was titled. Wait, was Retribution? I Maybe the title was something kind of stupid like that. But I honestly don't remember. But I know that, like, the show or the DVD was, like, called. Uh, Oh my god, I hate my brain, but it was like something, dis rebirth of dissection, or it was something like that. But, in my hands are eight, eight of the best Scandinavian black metal songs of all time. And, again, this is a really tough competition here, because... We have two of the best black metal recordings from Sweden in my hand right now. With the original artwork, which to me is a big deal. Like, not having the Necrolord artwork on the first press reissue. I, that's what I meant. The, the first reissue Black Lodge did, it was just this. It was... It was this. I reviewed it. It was on, like, purple vinyl. But, like, you can't fit all... Like, it just doesn't... Like, you're really sacrificing the sound. Like, I'm pretty sure, like... Side A had, like, six songs on it. Or, like, so It was just absurd. Because, like, you can't... I'm not sure, like, I'm not going to get into, you know, vinyl pressing and stuff like that, but there's a reason certain records are double LPs, because, like, you can only fit so much on those 12 inches, but Storm of the Lights Bane, thank you to Dennis for this birthday present a couple of years ago, back in the old world. I don't know where he got this from, but I was just beyond grateful. I was like, yo, like, seriously? Like, where did you find this? I know it had, like, a little cosmetic dink on it, but it, it was, it's no big deal. There's, like, a little chunk right there. So, you just have to skip it with the needle. But, otherwise, like... I would love, honestly, you know, to have an official version, but it sounds great. I mean, it looks great, aside from the little cosmetic damage. But, just real quick. La, 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 la. We're gonna listen to more dissection. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Damn. Oh shit. I 
always wanted to hear that pro I always heard of this project. It was like members of dissection. They shared like a practice space with at the gates. And they supposedly had this like insane like black death metal band that like never really recorded anything supposedly but supposedly <laughs> there's a demo out there how true is this I, I have no idea but as soon as night's blood kicks in into unhallowed and then into where dead angels lie it's just like holy shit and retribution's track five i forgot Retribution, Storm of the Lights, Bane. My bad. Then Thorns of Crimson, Death, Soul Reaper, No Dreams, Breed, and Breathless Sleep. Fuck oh, yes. Like, you cannot go wrong with dissection and these two just absolute gems of black metal. And if you're like, it's not black metal, it's death metal. I don't care. It's whatever you want it to be. Just as long as it's awesome. But, um, again, I do not know if Swano remastered this for the, for the LP. It does not say... I'm looking. All music was composed and arranged during Hours of Darkness in 1993-95. And it was recorded at Hellspawn slash Unisound Studios between the 17th and 30th of March, 95. It has the dissection band contact. Wait, Swano did this, right? Or am I being stupid? Anyways, look at that artwork. Oh! Rosé! Awesome. But every... To me, Dissection and their early catalog... Like, Dissection was one of the first black metal bands where I went out and I got the demo comp the past is alive because I just wanted to hear more die I was so obsessed with dissection for a long time because like when you're first getting into black metal like dissection really because they have those death metal elements still and it just is a lot more digestible catchy and just awesome. Like, I hate throwing the term melodic, but it is. Like, if I can do this to, like, the beat, it's melodic, but it's evil as shit sounding. Like, those riffs are just beyond memorable. They never get old. Both records here. And I know, it looks like King Diamond's Abigail. Let's compare the two. Why not? Because I want to hear his part. Oh wait, here is the hype sticker for the Sombra Land. It says, NOTHING! Recorded at Unisound Studios in 1993, now remastered by Dan Swano. Limited edition gatefold double LP black vinyl. Still, like I said, it sounds amazing, looks amazing, and I'm probably gonna put it back on the turntable. But I just want to get the one part of the song because it gives me goosebumps every single time. Oh shit. Right here. Like, this was one of those moments when I was younger. Like, driving over a bridge and, like, looking out and seeing, like, a thunderstorm and this kicking on, like, stereo. It's one of those moments where it's like, whoa, this is cool. And 
and then like I remember in like 2004 driving with uh, my ex in Pittsburgh to her parents' house and we got hit by like a blizzard and we're in like the mountains and we had listened to Satyricon, Nemesis Davidia and we put on a dissection mix I made and I just remember Night's Blood kicked on and like it was just one of those moments where I just like oh my goodness like it's when you feel it like and you know it's like why I love this shit that's why Night's Blood but yeah, I know John was not the nicest dude, but hey, he could he could really wail on guitar though. I mean, we can't deny that. And his vocals, I love dissection. The tiebreaker technically would be Live Legacy, but I'm not going off live recordings. I'm going off the Somberland and Storm of the Lights Bane. And again, like the the EP versions of the songs, I forget what the difference is. Or even if there is a difference. I honestly have not listened to the C D version in like yeah, like since 2006, probably. So, again, uh, this bootleg, but at the it, like, it's one of those records, you know, like, it's kind of hard to find a copy, at least in. I know that Dissection just did, like, a box set and shit. I know that on, like, Darkness Shall Rise, I think. I'm pretty sure that's a dissection box set. But, like, this bootleg, like, it, it's gatefold. I mean, like, for a bootleg, it's pretty sick. Like, colored LP, like, it's whatever. I, I don't care as long as the songs sound good, and they do. So, until I can get a legit copy, I'm more than happy with my copy of Storm of the Lights Bane by Sweden's Dissection. One of the best extreme metal bands of all time. But, but, if I had to pick, the way I do these versus videos is Desert Island. So, What record have I listened to more in my life? Probably Storm of the Light Bane. It just, for years, was my go-to. Like, we have either we're playing a show tonight, I'm going to the skate park, I'm driving three hours somewhere, I'm listening to Storm of the Light Bane to start the trip. That was just how I had things for a long time, actually. Like, when it came to what black metal and stuff I was going to listen to. Because I didn't have an iPad at, iPod at the time. So, when it came to CDs, after my CD binder got stolen and I had to burn a bunch of fucking CDs. Two of the CDs I made sure that I burned were The Sombrolin and Storm of the Lights Bane. But I also had Live Legacy with um the Where Dead Angels Lie EP. And I think I had a couple demo tracks on there. But I don't remember. But anyways... If I had to pick between Storm of the Lights Bane 
and the Somberlin. Come on. I'm going with the Somberlin. Spooky. But no, in all seriousness, riffs. Everything about this 1993 beast just screams the word classic. Again, you don't need to be Joe Black Metal to enjoy the Somberland or to enjoy Storm of the Lights Bane or to enjoy Dissection. Like, I know some death metal heads are probably like, fuck that band, you know. Uh, I, I get Like, I legit, I get it. Like, if it's not the type of black metal you want, like, yo, um, he, like, here, some more, bo like, throw on some more Boast Dad. Like, I, I know I am. I'm getting ready to, I have the LP out and everything. I'm ready to get my war metal on after this. But a couple of days ago, it was just, like, bitter cold outside. And I came in. And I was looking at both records. And I was like. What do I like more? And that's where the video honestly fucking came from. This isn't something like. Like. I want you to tell me as well. What record do you like better? The Somberlin? Or Storm of the Lights Bane. There is no wrong answer technically, but like you have Frozen, The Somberland, Crimson Towers, A Land Forlorn, Heaven's Damnation, The Grief Prophecy, Shadows Over a Lost Kingdom, Night Blood, Unhallowed, Where Dead Angels Lie, Thorns of Crimson Death. Like, oh, it's so. Like, Part of me really wants to just choose Storm of the Lights Bane, but I'm going to go with the Somberlin. Just because, and I'm, I'm going off of this version of it. So, just, again, like, this sounds great. There's nothing at all wrong with the sound quality, but... The remastered version here by Swano is like legit. It it makes it really like I said that this is the best I've heard dissection ever sound in my life. Oh, the King Diamond thing, see? Brain damage, folks. It fucking sucks. Wear a helmet, and even if you wear a helmet, it's still bad shit can happen. But, alright, King Diamond Conspiracy. There it is, Abigail. Abigail, no, you're in control of her brain, Abigail. <laughs> oh my god! It's not the same color! But now, I remember the first time I saw the Somberland, I was like, Whoa, somebody likes King Diamond. Like, it's still awesome, though. Like, it, it really is, in my opinion. Like, it, it's sick. And, uh, wait, does it tell you? Uh, the front cover by Studio Dazan. Yeah, front cover by Studio Dazan. I don't know who that is. Wait, does it have a name on it? I should know this. I don't know why I don't know this. This isn't Necro Lord. Wait a minute. Why? Wait. No, 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 no. Why am I drawing a blank here? I, I know this. God damn it. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. When I was younger, I always was like, what? 
But then I kind of thought, I was like, oh, like, maybe they're paying, like, homage to the king, you know? And this only has one rider where this has, you know? So I always kind of thought that was cool. And I was a nerd as a kid, too, so, like, the first time I saw that shit, I was like, whoa! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I was, like, geeking out, like, because I thought I, like, stumbled upon, like, some, like, you know, secret, like, whoa, did you know that there's two horses on both covers? To the one kid in my class that knew what black metal was, I think. At least the, uh, if he did, he did his research. Or he borrowed a lot of his brother's uh, shit. Because he would always say, uh, I borrowed this off my brother, so uh, make sure you bring it back. And he would bring, like, it was more like the popular, like, like Immortal and, and you know, uh, I remember he had, like, some of the other Mayhem records. And I remember being like, yo, like, what, this shit sucks. Like, I'm sorry, man. Like, this is terrible. Like, I he played me that grand... Uh, wait, was it Grand Decor... I, wait, it wasn't Chimera. I'm trying to remember what it was, but it fucking sucked. It was like... It, seriously, it's terrible. Like, I can't... Ugh. But, see, like, that's one of those, like, you know, that better to burn out, to fade away type thing. Like... When Dissection came back after John got out of jail, John had some big plans for Dissection, including a U.S. tour, which would have been amazing. But he wasn't going to be allowed in the country. He just got out of jail for murder. So when Johnny took his life in the name of Satan, which is... Like, like, trust us, let's read into John from Dissection. I'm not going to get into it. But, it's just some gnarly stuff here. And if you're a fan of Watain, um, and you don't know who Dissection are, I'm sorry, but, uh, they're a fucking poser. <laughs> like, if you, for real, if you like when and if you are one of those people that are like, I like Watain, but I don't like Dissection. What? What? I don't like this pop-up, but... <laughs> I like the tunes, and I'm sorry, but the battle of Dissection goes to the Somberland. For the reasons I said, song quality, length, and just, it's one of my just personal favorite records of all time. They both are, and there, again, there is no wrong answer, but if I'm on a desert island, I've played both records to death, but I've played Summer Lights Bane definitely a little bit more than I've played Sorry. The Somberland. But it's just like when I want to listen to Dissection on vinyl, this is what I go to. So, again, if you have to get the pop up book, just know it's worth it for the sound quality. If this is a single LP, do not buy it. If it's the Black Lodge, and you see that logo as well, but it's all on just two sides, and there's no Necro Lord artwork, put that bad boy back on the rack. I don't care how desperate you are. Like Again, like I said, yeah, it's cool to be able to listen to those songs, but they sound extremely thin. The mix sucks. You want the Swano. You want this version right here. Like, I don't know why they didn't do this first. 
I, this should have been a one and done, and maybe a picture disc. Double a picture, double picture disc would cost a lot. I, I do understand that, but it's worth it, especially like I'm sure Necro Lord has bonus art. And you have you you could do some real cool stuff actually with uh like the castle the like let's say you could technically I'm trying to think how it, this would work. There's a couple ways it would work. It could work, but I think it would be cool to like. Even if, because I know that, I think that they did do a picture disc version, and that the C, and, and that the C side has an etching, no, the D side has an etching, so, like, on the back of side C is an etching. Yes, that's what it is. I knew it was something like that. Yeah, I don't know if it's a picture disc, but I'm, like, pretty sure it's, like, the, uh, sigil type thing. I'm pretty sure it's this. With like the 666. Not positive. Like just taking a shot in the dark. Kind of. But again, congratulations to 1993's The Somberlin by Dissection. Rest in power, John. And like I said, just one of my favorite records from Sweden, period. And definitely one of my favorite Swedish black death metal records. Whatever you want to call it, it's right there in both genres. Like, it, it doesn't really matter. Like, if somebody was like, yeah, my favorite death metal record, Dissection, The Somber One. I'm not going to be like, that's not death metal. I'd be like, oh, cool. Like, I'm not going to be a dick. Like, you obviously have a pretty good taste in music. If you're, you know, if this is your favorite death metal record, I'm kind of curious, honestly, as to what else you're into musically. Because that's an interesting pick for death metal. Because, like I said, it's not really death metal, but it has certain elements where it's like, Oh, I see. But, again, congratulations to the Somberlin. And cheers to Black Lodge for getting it right this time. Now, the pop-up was a little cosmetically not needed. But, hey, as long as the songs sound this good, this is the winner. And again, just that Necro Lord artwork. I could look at this all day. And I know some people just want that like Transylvanian Hunger classic black metal look. And I 100% understand. But at the same time, like part of me, like I love when like the new Commodious, like the cover art is like, Oh my god. I, I was just looking at it like, holy shit, that's an awesome cover. Speaking of Commodious, I'm slacking on his just insane discography. And I always forget that I have the split he did with Valak on vinyl. Thank you, Appalachian Noise Records. I'm just throwing this on the turntable for a little bit later. Side Valak, side Commodious. So good. Uh, I think you get two new tracks and a cover because this has a. Uh, you got a Leviathan cover on the Valak side and a Celtic Frost cover on the Commodious side. Badass. But a nice mix of Australian, Commodious, and U.S. black metal, Valak. But I am really 
black and like I wish like I don't think the new Commodious is out on vinyl yet, but like when it is, oh yeah, trust me, I am grabbing that as soon as possible. But thanks again for watching, as always, you fucking rule. Hey. And thank you again to Pat and Dennis for making today's video possible, as well as the Patreon and you watching right now. Hey.